So we're, we've been teaching on a series called Reigning in Life in Christ. But today's sermon is called Enjoying a Thankful Life. Enjoying a Thankful Life. So I want you to open it up. With, I'm going to read the scripture, but you're going to see come up before you a scripture. I want you to read along with, don't speak it with me, but read along with me. Boy, I sang my heart out. I, aren't I noisy? <laughs> Ask my wife. We'll get, we'll get that reevaluation there. All right, Psalms 100, 4 and 5. Look what it says. Now, how many here know that God has courts and, and God has gates? In other words, to come into his presence. How many? So here it gives us instruction. If we're going to be in his presence, come through the gates, we're going to just dwell with him. Here's an interesting bit of instructions. It just tells us we enter his gates with what? Thanksgiving. Lord, I love you. I, I just thank you, God. Talking to some of the, my Christian friends, my family, uh, just to hear them thank God for the things God is doing in their life. I think sometimes we lose that thankfulness. God wants us to get it back because we enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his holy courts with what? With praise. Amen. Praise, Lord, I thank you, and Lord, I praise you. Well, what if, Pastor Kerry, everything you see around you, just, it seems to be negative, and it seems to be broken. If you want to go into his gates, you have to what? Be thankful. And if you want to dwell in his courts, you have to be praised for or, or thankful and give praise. Are you with me? Look what it says. Be thankful to him and bless his name, for the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures for all generations. Now let's look at the next one. Psalms 34, 1 through 5. This is you and I. Let's claim this for us, okay? I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be continually in my mouth. My soul, that means your you personality, your mind, your will, your emotions, my soul, okay, my soul shall make its boast in the Lord. You know why I'm so happy, Piggy? I'm in love with Jesus. You know what? Why I'm so blessed? I'm in love with Jesus, you see. My soul is testifying. Amen. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord, and the humble shall hear of it and be glad. Now, who's the humble? You go out there in the world, doesn't look like many humble people. Oh, yeah, they're the broken ones. They're the ones that are truly, truly just broken and they need help. The humble. Jesus says, blessed are the poor in spirit. They should come to the end of themselves. And theirs is the kingdom of heaven, right? Did you notice you never got saved until you realized you needed to be saved? And for some, that means they came to your end of yourself, realize you made a mess of things. God, I need your help come into my life. Say amen. So he goes on. Oh, the humble will hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify. Another word for that is, oh, amplify the Lord with me. Amplify him. Okay. And, and it says, oh, amplify or magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. You shouldn't have anything you should be afraid of. And if you do, perfect love casts out fear. And perfect love is Jesus. And delivered me from all my fears. They looked to him and were radiant. This is the part I want to tell you. Remember, Christians were first known. Those that walk with God, you're going back to Adam, to Noah, all back to those old saints. When they walk with God, they were just shine. There was a glory on them. And they were known by the Samaritans as the shiny ones. They just stood out. They shined. There's something different about them. Think about it today. A real Christian that loves God, they don't have to tell you they love God. You can see you can hear that they love God just by what they do say and how they act. Can you say amen? I, amen. All right. Are you ready? So, all right. So, let's look at this. We're going to cover these four areas. Number one, we need to learn to enjoy 
the will of God, enjoying the will of God. Two, give thanks, now listen, in all things. Some people read the Bible and it says, give thanks for everything. No, no, just like everything doesn't work together for your, your good. It says all things of God work together for your good. God in you works together for your good. Amen? But look what it says. Give thanks in your situation. Can you say, give thanks? Why? Because God will take a happy Christian and move them out of there real quick. Rather than a complaining Christian. Look at your neighbor and say, oh, oh. And then thirdly, we're going to talk about praise and thanksgiving, keeping us fresh and alert. God wants us fresh and happy, clean. Can you say amen? And so doing that, giving thanks, being thankful, will keep you fresh and alert. And then fourthly, thankful expressions of praise. We're going to show you what it means to be silly in the Lord, okay? Just what the Bible says about it. Say, I got it. All right, let's go to point one. Enjoying the will of God. Now, we just broke off from last week how to just be with God and enjoy his uh, grace along the way. Amen. So Ephesians, go with me, Ephesians 5, look at 15 through 21. See then that, that you walk uprightly, that circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming or purchasing back the time because the days are evil. Now, do you believe you're in the world, but you're not of the world? And we're, that's called in the Psalms, the 23rd Psalm, the valley of the shadow of death. Everybody, everybody thinks, oh, that's my situation, and God somehow has allowed me. No, he's talking about the valley of shadow of death is the fallen earth, the fallen world. And you are born here, and you have to deal with it. It's kind of like being born in the ghetto, and you have to deal with that. So guess what? God came and sent his son so that we can be loaded and fixed and preserved and instructed how to live life to its fullness if we live it in Christ. So the enemy comes right along, Piggy, and he says, let me show you what it really is to serve God. And so he gives us, now how many here has ever been to the doctor? Now how many know that sometimes they give you medicine and sometimes they can give you a placebo? That means it looks like the real thing, but it doesn't have anything in it. Hello? Have you ever heard of that? Come on. Oh, yeah. Okay. So God has the real thing, and the other thing that looks like it's God is the placebo. It's called religion. Now, remember, you are not a religious person. You're having a personal relationship with God. Religion is an acts, acts of different things, right? And some people teach it so the more things you do for God, the better off you are with God. And those are not, that's not so. Because as much as you want to, you can't get God to love you any more than he loves you right now. Hello? You didn't earn his love. You're not worthy of his love, but he says, I give you my love. Now, you and I are smart enough, we didn't turn it down. Can you say amen? So it goes, walk uprightly. Therefore, do not be unwise, he says in verse 17. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. All right, for all believers, he's going to tell you what the will of the Lord is. You're going to say, okay, what is it? Fasting, praying, what are we going to go after here? First thing he says, do not be drunk with wine. Now, this is talking about don't be a drunkard. Don't be somebody who's always copping a buzz. Because you're not going to be of yourself when you do that. I know that when I used to drink, I changed into another person. Dr. Chuckle and Mr. Hyde, I wonder if that was about that. But anyway, I don't anymore. I don't, I don't do any of those things that cause me to be not myself. I found that that's really silly. It's a waste of time. And I'm sure you guys have too. 
But to understand this a little further, be not drunk with wine, but instead, he says, but wine is dispensation. Do you guys know what that is? You know what dispensation is? That is, so people see you buzzed and drunk and, and just all shot and you confess to be a Christian, that manner of dispensation or lifestyle will offend and people won't be able to trust you anymore. Hide the bottle, Uncle Jerry's coming over, kind of weird stuff. And so for us to understand, Paul puts that in there. He says, you want to really get after God? Don't let yourself be a party hardy person. And don't allow it to taint you who your witness is a Christian. But be filled with the Spirit. Can you say amen? Now, I want to tell you real quickly, I've been to several meetings where the Spirit of God moved so strongly, people were healed. But I got so filled with the Spirit, I felt like somebody, they slipped me a Mickey. I mean, happy and, and silly and, and joyous. And those things are all right if you're not inducing it. Can you say amen? So be filled with the Spirit is actually what that means in the Greek. Speaking to one another in Psalms, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want a psalm, a hymn, okay? Spiritual songs. You guys know what a spiritual song is? For example, when we continue to worship under the songs and giving our worship, God could put a melody in your heart. Making melody in my heart. I'm making melody in my heart, making melody in my heart unto the king of kings. And when we're worshiping, you can hear somebody with a new song, never sang it before in their life. God gave me one time to cheer my folks up. He says, get up and shout the victory. Don't sit around. Jesus set you free. Get up, proclaim the liberty, praise God. Praise God, don't you think and care about yourself. Jesus wants, he's coming again, so get up and shout, shout the victory. Of course, I messed up a few words, that's a pretty old song. But God dropped it in my heart, a song to give to my folks because they were kind of upset. Some situations that happened in my family. So God might put a song in your heart. You might get up in the morning and there might be a song on your mind. Beller it out a little bit. Don't wake up the neighbors, though. Are you still with me? Amen. Sing to one another spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Then it says, giving thanks always for all things to God. Did, did it say for everything? Did it say give thanks for everything? Come on, look up at me. No. All things to God. Let render under Caesar what's Caesar's. Render under God what's God's. Don't blame devil stuff on God doing it. For example, God made you sick to teach you something. That is not correct. God does not use Satan and the tools of the devil to beat up his kids. That's a different way of thinking. That's a religious thought. And God doesn't like religion. The people that were religious in his day said, crucify Jesus. Crucify him. Because he didn't match their stuff. And one day, you might not like your church anymore. I'm not talking about this one. Where you were traditionally brought up, because you'll find out something's not right. Don't get upset. Don't freak out. Just go where the fountain's open, where people are really in love with God. You can tell. They're lit up. Say amen. A couple of points I want to give you under this. Church, knowing what we know today, right now, it is very important that we live a thankful life. Say amen. Full of praise, full of appreciation, and to finish our life and work for Jesus that way. There are some people, they'll look, oh, I got an usher today. Can you imagine? And so they go, oh, gosh. And then you start doing that. What are you doing? You get to usher. Not I got to. Attitude. Altitude. Bad attitude. Bummer. 
too much talking and gets in trouble because you say too much and uh, it gets us in trouble. It says, sin lies in a multitude of words. Okay, so there's a good one in Proverbs. All right, let's go on. Two, to walk circumspectly means to live a good witness uprightly before others. Don't be Dr. Chuckle, Mr. Hyde. Now, we know that we're, you're not that way. But have you ever got angry and heard something come out of the side of your mouth you thought you shouldn't have said? Of course. God doesn't want us to live that way and do that all the time and not deal with it. Everyone say conviction. Okay, God lives in our heart. And he said he will convict the world of sin. Let me show you how that works. Let's say you're doing something. And you didn't know it was wrong, but God finally got you a point where you, you saw that it was actually hurting somebody. And something in your heart go, goes, mm, that's not good. That's called a conviction. God doesn't make you feel bad, but he, he kind of just puts a thud in your heart saying, ah, you went a little too far on that one. You need, we as Christians and believers, we need to listen to that. Because that's how God gets us to trust his faithfulness and gets us to be used by him a lot. Because we can know when things are right and when things are not so right and follow that God conviction that we have in our heart. Now, for some people, they can't allow certain things that maybe you can allow. But some people don't like to sit in front of a TV and just waste time. Doesn't mean you do, and doesn't mean what you like to do. That's absolutely okay. But you'll notice some people in their heart will feel that that's not for them. That's called a conviction. There's nothing wrong with them doing that or not doing that. The idea is when you're walking with God now, he should be steering our life. So when you're steering off to the ditch, you'll get a conviction. Whoop, don't do that. Hello? Listen to it. God's right there to kind of keep you from making a, a left turn when you should have gone right. Right? All right. Thirdly, understand that God desires for us to be caught up in him, to delight in him. What does he say? Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Wow, to delight means to be thankful, appreciative, don't you think? And he'll give you. It's hard to say. Remember when the day you had your children, maybe your grandkids, and they just seem delighted to see you. They're just delighted about you. Oh, grandma, grandma, oh, oh you know, and how does your heart feel? Oh, gushy, wishy, you know, it's all sweet, usually. Of course, our brain can always throw up and yeah, but, you know. But yeah, how do you think God feels when you get all, all caught up and all amazed in him? Now, you can't do that all the time. But when you can't do it, amen, make yourself a little tired worshiping God in your own place. The worship today, you know, it's kind of envious because we call this God's living room. But there are many watching that watch from their living room. And they can turn up the stereo, hello, get up and dance around and do the hop, hop, two-step for Jesus. Absolutely. We're going to see some of those wonderful expressions of thanksgiving a little later on. And then fourthly, being full of joy. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Being full of joy and praise keeps us in him and alert to fulfill and get all of his benefits. God cannot keep something from a child that is lavishing on him. All right. So point two now. Give thanks in all things. Because we are in a fallen planet, a fallen earth, we're to give thanks anyway. Why? Because he saved us. Can you say amen? It's easy to give thanks when everything's going your way. When, when things aren't going your way, that's when you should thank him even more for the things you have, not for the things that you're suffering or seem to suffer. God doesn't use physical circumstances to teach you a lesson ex 
except if you're a dummy. God sends somebody to you to rescue you. And you say, oh, no, no, God's going to rescue me. God sends somebody else to you to rescue you. Oh, no, 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 God sends somebody else like Carrie come to you and share and preach a little bit to you. Oh, no, no, God's going to come rescue me. Well, those were three things that God's doing to rescue. Don't you miss those opportunities that pop up. And then that's when you take it to God, you see. And he makes those things, because it's important to stay thankful. In any situation that you're in, you're just to stay thankful, because you know bad things don't come from God. So even though you might be suffering some of those, you know God didn't send them. So you can be thankful. Can you say amen? amen. But you remember, we're often run by what we see in here, because we're natural people too. So when you feel yourself coming down and your eyes are everywhere else but Jesus, first thing you should do is give thanks. What? It shuts all that down and gets you to look up. Say amen. I got the hiccup, so I'm giving myself a break and you too. Okay, let's go to Colossians chapter 2, please. Verse 16 through 18. Give thanks in all things. In verse 16, it says, rejoice always. How often should we rejoice? We read earlier, his praise shall be continually in my mouth. Pray without ceasing. Well, Pastor Carrie, how in the world can we do that? You see, you're thinking either or. You either got to be seriously and pray. You're not thinking that you can grab your cup of coffee, get in the car, go through the traffic, and as you go through the traffic, pray to God. Did you know, maybe you're in the project in the garage. You could be interchanging your conversation and talking. Prayer means talking or asking. So well, you can be in conversation to God throughout the day. I talk to God, you know, some people just talk to themselves. I talk to God all the time. And I talk out loud. And of course, I'm not around a lot of people, you know, they won't think I'm nuts. But I say, well, God, what are we going to do in this situation? I really don't know how to pray here. Can you help me in this? And I interact with God throughout the day. That's what it means, pray without ceasing. You come to a situation, maybe there's an accident up there. Oh, Lord, we pray right now, take care of that. My wife and I, when we, see, we hear a siren, most of the time, when we hear a siren or something, we go, Father, go with them going to help, be with them needing the help, match them up in Jesus' name and get them where they need to go. Now, that's something you... If you do it often enough, it just becomes automatic. Don't we do that, dear? That was an amen. All right. And he said, pray without ceasing in everything, not for everything. Give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. God wants us happy. Now, if you take water and you put it in a cup and you let it sit long enough, it won't be happy water anymore. <laughs> It'd be stale water. But if you take water and you get fresh from the tap, I mean, not, you know, fresh from the water source, and it's moving and it's fresh, you see. God wants us moving and fresh. If nothing else, sitting there and praying and thanking God and being a little more vibrant from it. Get out of the box you little fox, and go be a little bit more. Be a little louder. A little more thank you, Jesus. Why? Because your flesh doesn't want to do it. When my body tells me, sit down, I stand up. When my body says, give up, I get on. Why? Because I'm not following what my body tells me. Of course, I'm talking, not talking sickness. I'm not feeling, going by my feelings, emotions. Not going about whether I think it's going to be a good day or not. Oh, it's raining. I'm going to be depressed. This nonsense. We were never created to be that way. Say amen. Point one, church. Notice the word said rejoice always. Keeps everything from getting stuck and stale. Two, pray without ceasing is to have a God first relationship. And then talk to them throughout the day. Praying and, and conversing with them. 
Lord, I can either do it this way or that way. What do you think? Hello? Amen. Another thing, I want to, I'm supposed to share this. Your life, all of your life, God accepts. Now, there's some things in your life that are a waste of time and things. He'll clean that up. But he accepts you. Remember the devil makes a person separate things and challenge himself. Well, you can't be a man of prayer and work as hard as you do. Either or. No, that's when you go to God and say, the enemy's trying to play a either or competition game with myself. You ever notice about humans? People get in competition. You get around guys. They get around the fireplace. Ooh, 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 ooh. Remember Tim, the tool man? Hello? You know, outdoing and that kind of thing. That's what the enemy does. It gets us in competition. Remember Cain and Abel, Cain and Abel. Your body is Cain. Your spirit is Abel. Your body won't let your spirit be free unless you take your spirit to God and let him kill your body. What do you mean, physically? No. Die it out, present it as a living sacrifice. Romans 12, verse 1 through 3. Thirdly, church, Jesus said to seek first the kingdom, God's dominion and power and influence, and being right with him. And all these things that you have need of will be added to you. Do you think he can do that? You think you can seek God's dominion to take over your life? And can you seek to be right with him by coming to Jesus every morning, presenting yourself to him? He says to do it. But it's kind of hidden for a lot of Christians because, I mean, I got to get my truck and drive. How can I pray? Pray. Stop being so formal and get into praying and talk with God. He loves your face. He created you. All right, say amen. And fourthly, finally, it says, in everything, give thanks. Not for everything, but having a thankful heart causes God to focus on us as we meet with him. For example, let me be demonstrative. Hi, God, it's me. Yeah, I went through a rotten night last night. I had cramps and pain. And I'm coming to you. Yep, Lord, I know. I know I'm not supposed to bring myself. I'm supposed to bring myself for you to change myself. But Lord, it's, it was a rough night. And I'm, I want to tell you about, do you think that's the right kind of thing to do before God? Now, people do that. Now, listen, I'm not putting anyone down. But we do that because it's a trick. God already knows what we're going through. Think about it. Doesn't he know everything? But he can't do anything on our behalf unless we ask him to help us. So what does the enemy do? He gets us to go to God and complain. Tell them all that we're going through and all that. Don't, that's not prayer. That's complaining. So change it up and say, Lord, you know what I'm going through. Let's just drop that there. I need some help. And then start talking to him and inviting him. Remember, God needs to be invited. Every day, invited. Well, he didn't go anywhere. No, but there are parts of our life that God still needs to be invited in to help solve the mystery of stress and broken things. Say amen. Point three. Praise and thanksgiving keeps us alert and focused. Colossians 3 this time. Verse 6 and 7. Look at this. This is awesome. Verse 6 says. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord. Then he tells us something magic. Wonderfully. So walk in him. You mean we could be Christians and walk in ourselves and not into Jesus? Yes, you, you, people do that all the time. I'm just a living for the Lord. You've, heard, you've seen that sign with a little cat. It's holding on the bar. And his face is in screw shape. I'm just hanging on. No, that is not your walk with God. Remember, you asked God to come. In your heart, right? Do you know when there's a wreck in the ocean? Do you know how they get it to the surface? They have something insert into the wreck and then they fill it full of air. And the air dislodges it and brings it to the surface. 
Get yourself filled with God every day. And if you feel like you're some kind of wreck laying at the bottom of the sea somewhere, get filled with God so he can bring you to the surface, bring you up. You're a spiritual being, not a physical being anymore. You were a sinner. Now you receive Jesus. Now you're a child of God. Forgetting those things which are behind your past life, pressing on to the new life in Christ. Amen. All right. So praise, thanks, him keeps us alert and focused. Colossians 2, 6. And you, therefore, have received Jesus Christ the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him. Rooted means stabilized, because roots hold the plant stable. And built up means growth. Rooted, stable in God. You're not an emotional wreck. One day you want to serve God, the other day you don't want to serve God. You know, God forbid. Rooted and built up in him. Established in the faith. How do we get established in the faith? Hearing and doing the word. Hearing and doing the word. We get established. God establishes us in our belief. Can you say amen? All right. It's established in the faith that you have been taught, abounding with thanksgiving. You see, when we're walking with God, first things out of our mouth is, come on, Lord, I love you, Lord, appreciate you. Amen. Don't be thinking religious. He's not going to hear that. I haven't brushed my teeth yet. No. Good morning, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. You know, I, don't, I, can't, I can't help but tell. You know, when I came out as a little baby, I don't think they had to spank me. I just started bellowing, you know, for that first breath. God gave us our first breath. Can you say amen? And you know, God in that first breath hears us whining maybe when we were kids. Maybe we didn't just whimper. He hears in that music. He sees in that a soul. He sees that in, in a child that might come back to him as he grows up through the world. We have children, some of us, and the world has taken them captive. And we need to live a life and we need to share with them with such love that God can capture them and bring them out of the world, out of darkness into light. Can you say amen? So it goes on, rooted and grounded, established in the faith that you have been taught, abounding with thanksgiving. Colossians 3, verses 15 through 17. I like scripture, so... I like to use it, not my opinion so much. And let the peace of God, did you see the word let? You have to settle down and let God's peace take over. you agitated, frustrated, you're letting things overcome you. You go to prayer, let the peace of God rule, control your heart. To which you also were called in. How many bodies? You see, there's only one church, so don't let anybody play the game with you. The only real church of Jesus Christ is the born-again believer, whether Catholic, Methodist, doesn't matter. You can have all kinds of labels, but there's only one. So that's why we don't argue with other Christians, even though they may want to. We smile and say, no, no, you're a God's child. I'm going to, teach, I'm going to give you respect. And if we can't stay together and show respect, then we'll have to be respectful away from each other. Can you say Amen. And I think a lot of Christians lost respect for things because they're looking at the natural parts. Hello. Instead of the spiritual part. God says we know no man after their flesh. We don't, because of their habits and stuff. We don't know them like that. We, we know them after the spirit now. How are you in prayer? How are you reading the word? I know you that way. So I don't look at your faults. I, I might say something by the Spirit to kind of correct you or, or share with you, but I'm not looking at your man, man, or your girl, girl. I'm looking at your spirit, man, your potential, where you are, where you could be. And those of you listening as well, I'm listening for ways in which you can apply the Word of God to get you farther on with the Lord. Can you say amen? We all want more of Him, don't we? So we're to be rooted and grounded and walk in Him. And then verse 15 says, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts to which you were called to one body and be thankful. 
Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Have a lot of it. Be in the word, in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do, now look at this, whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord. Jesus giving thanks to God and the Father through him. Do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God. Are you glad you're alive? You got, glad you got up with this morning with breath? Your mind thinking? You might have had to have a cup of coffee or whatever. But aren't you glad? And we lose that thankfulness. And when we do, Satan, the accuser, comes in and he starts accusing. You call yourself a man of God. You haven't been to church in how many years? You know, this kind of dumping on you. God never talks to his children that way. Even if you've been away from him for a long time, God is not a human person to chastise his kids that way. He has a way of touching a child to turn them around. You just keep praying for that child. Say amen. And finally, our next point. Thankfulness, expressions of praise. Are you with me? Get ready to go to Psalms 150, and I want you to put your finger there while I go through a few points. You and I have received Jesus Christ in our hearts. Let us walk in him, rooted and grounded. And that's where a lot of Christians aren't doing. They're meeting with God. Church becomes sort of a pay station. They go in, spend their time, check in, check out, and then the rest of the week to just go on. No, no, no. It's a lifestyle. It's living with God. But it's not weird. Can you say amen? Two, we are to be thankful all the time. Not for the bad things. Not for everything. Be, be thankful. Oh, Lord, it didn't come to pass as far as I can see. But I'm thankful that it is coming to pass. I'm thankful because I can see beyond the, the now and get beyond to the here and now. Can you say Amen. Thirdly, we are to let the peace of God rule our heart. God doesn't want you agitated. Doesn't want your spirit agitated. You'll find out that people get agitated a lot, get uptight, try to do this, try to do that. Their spirit can't sustain their infirmity, and they come down with a lot of sickness, a lot of blues, a lot of body aches, because they're supposed to be healthy in their spirit. One way to be that way is to be thankful can you say amen? Full of praise. Why? Because it doesn't let your bones become weary. Just joking with you. It still doesn't. Are you with me? And then fourthly, do we appreciate God for rescuing us? When's the last time you spent a half an hour just thanking him? Going through a list. Oh, Lord, thank you when you first saved me. Do you remember that, Lord? Oh, I can remember I, was, I took that wrong turn and you yanked me out of that. Mess. Oh, Lord, thank you for this. Have you ever gone and, and just brought out the good things? Remember, you're going to review them with him when you stand before the Lord anyway. Let's review. Sometimes just sit with the Lord and review some of the things that he's touched you and blessed you with. And tell him about it. He knows, but tell him he loves to hear it. The little child said, Dad, I want to appreciate just what you've been doing. You've taught me a lot through the years. I sat down and talked to my dad. Let me tell you, you know I'm talking to you now, those of you who are coming into camera. I'm talking to you. But it isn't until I can sit down with you face to face and we have a one-on-one -on -one, that it becomes really, really deep. And then let me encourage you. You can talk to God throughout the entire day and he wants you to. But then sit down. Have a time where you sit down and talk face to face. Imagine Jesus sitting right there and you're talking right there to him. And let him also talk back. Even, even if it's just an impression. Okay? Because that's how God makes you his friend. He sees that you're consistent, sees that you're with him, sees that you want to be with him. That you don't give up excuses, you don't pop off of this dumb stuff out of your mind. And there's this drawing closer to God. And each time you do it, you get better at it and become more settled in. And you learn from just having faith, you learn to trust God. And trust means you'll obey, obey him. 
People that trust the Lord don't have any problem disobeying. They just obey him because they know how long it took to build trust. Okay, now, all right, let's go into some of the crazy things of praise and worship. Psalms 150, I told you. Did you get there already? Verse 1 through 6. The psalmist here says, praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. We call this a living room. But God's sanctuary is the entire expanse of his creation. Can you say amen? And then he clarifies, he clarifies praise him in his mighty firmament. Everyone say firmament. That's the air you breathe all the way up to space. That's the firmament. And this is praise him for his mighty acts. Aren't you glad God's working in your life? What he's done, what he's doing, what he will do. Praise him for according to his excellent greatness. Is God great? He's the greatest. There is no other God beside him. Amen. It says praise him in the, with the sound of the trumpet. I have a, 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 I don't know how to pronounce it. I want to make sure I pronounce it right. It's a Jewish ram horn. A chauffeur, a chauffeur. Yeah. Anyway, and you blow the thing like a trumpet. And have you ever seen some of the ones? They have some big ones. And announcing the celebration. Can you say amen? In fact, there will be a trumpet just before Jesus catches us away. He'll sound the trumpet, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Woohoo! So it's to praise him with the trumpet. Okay, praise him with the lute, or like Becky has, flute, harp. You've seen a harp, people sitting down to a harp. There's different sizes of them where they can strum them in harmony. Amen. We, we knew a lady, she really couldn't play the harp. But she heard the spirit, and she just played what she heard. It was so beautiful. Remember that, dear? Amen. And then play with the harp. And then look with this. This is crazy. Praise him with the timbrel. Ding! Tambourine. I like to play the tambourine. I'm not very good at it. And the dance. Oh, my goodness. God wants us to dance. Now, how can we go to a bar and... We love the music and dance. Now, this is the past. And now in the church, we're scared to dance because it might offend God. No, he says, look, I, I like it. Have you ever seen people really get caught up in God and they're not looking foolish? There's rhythm to the dance and twirling and twisting. I went my earlier church, we had a whole bunch of wonderful black people. And they had all this rhythm and everything. And they get up and dance and twirl, and they'd never run into one another. I mean, like little tops. And you just go, wow, that's really something to see. I think a lot of the church now is waking up out of COVID and junk to begin to see the spiritual things of God coming alive in the church again. It's not crazy stuff, but God says, you get up and you want to do a two-step for God during worship? Loves, God loves it. The dance, the timbal ding and the dance. Praise him with the string instruments. Guitars, hello? Violins, cellos, can you say amen? And flutes, there's Becky. Praise him with the loud cymbals, oh, the radical drummer. What I was going to do is hope oh, I could pop on my drums and do a little solo for you, but I won't do it. I do love to play them, but I worship now with them. I don't just play. And it says, with the timbrel and the dance, praise him with the string instruments, praise him with the loud cymbals, crash! Praise him with the clashing timbrels. I have a thing called a hi-hat. They clang together, clashing cymbals. That everything that has breath, what? Praise the Lord, praise ye the Lord. So let's go over this again. It's very important that you and I stay positive and full of praise and thanksgiving. And you have a lot to thank God about. Could you say amen? Two, we found out that in everything, not for everything, 
we give thanks. So no matter the situation, we're praising God. Can you say amen? Not for something bad, but in some situation. Let's say something happened, you're, you're stuck on a train because it went off the rails. Nobody got hurt, but you can't go anywhere. What should you be doing? Singing praise, doing something positive. Why? Rescue team will come faster. God will see to it. One of his kids needs rescuing. Get to know your father. He's a rescuer. He will, he will bless you so much. I don't like to say the word spoil, but he will bless you so much. Don't forget to thank him along the way. Thank him along the way. Get up this morning. Father, I come to you with thanksgiving and into your courts to dwell with you in praise. Do you see? And when you do that, the water of the spirit inside of you keeps moving. And then the old polywog one can't make you stale. Because you're always fresh, you're alert, because you're always putting God on your mind. Lord, I praise you, making melody in my heart. Making melody in my heart. Making melody in my heart unto the king of kings, right? And so the idea behind that is our spirit's moving like a wellspring, bubbling up, bubbling up, bubbling up. And as it gets to move and as you get to be with God, God begins to open your eyes, begins to show you the path and begins by the help of the Holy Spirit to march you through as a believer, no longer as a just an experiencer, but as a believer in the Lord. Hello? Look, look at this, some of the examples. Remember Paul and Silas? Remember that in Acts 16? They were preaching Jesus, and nobody liked it, so they threw him in jail. He cast out a devil from a witch, a soothsayer, the red portions and red palms. <coughs> and she couldn't do anything anymore, got saved. Well, the people of the city, that we want Paul and Silas to quit. And so they threw him in jail, in stocks at the bottom of the jail, where all the other ones in the jail, where their restroom facilities go down and drip down on them. Just giving you a little history. And I can imagine Paul, they're in stocks, so their, their heads and arms are there. They're on their knees. And Paul and Silas, completely midnight dark, you can't see front of their face. And I can almost hear, notice I said almost, hear Silas say to Paul, Paul, here's another fine mass you got us into. No, no. Paul and Silas knew what to do because every time that they give thanks, give praise, God brings deliverance. So they said they prayed and sang hymns loudly so everybody in the prison could hear them singing and thanking God. And it says, God sent an earthquake and opened every jail cell. And Paul and Silas freed them up. Now remember, it's completely dark. There's no light. And the jailer knew that if he, his prisoners got out, he was going to be put to death by the Roman guards. No prisoners are to escape under his watch. What happens? Paul knew this. And he raises his voice and says, jailer. Don't do yourself any harm. We're all here. God saved us. And so finally they brought the light in. The jailer came down. He says, oh my gosh, there was an earthquake. Remember, everything is going on. The jailers didn't get out. Everything was put back in order. And the jailer just was overwhelmed. And he says to Paul, what must I do to be saved? Now that's the kind of walk that God wants us to have if we keep praise going. Be thankful. Don't talk about problems too much. You need to pray about them and all. But don't make conversations about how broken you are. Make conversations to what your hopes and your relationship with God, what God's doing in your life. Can you say amen? Now, did you get anything out of that? Could you give the Lord some thanksgiving praise? <laughs>